In the late 15th century, Dubrovnik, the capital of the Republic of Ragusa, was the center of one of the most powerful trading networks in the entire Mediterranean, competing on the same level as England, Spain, Genoa, and most significantly, its neighbor Venice. Ragusa's suzerain, the Ottoman Empire, controlled all known trading routes with India since the fall of Constantinople in 1453. As their vassal state, Ragusa had more direct access to this trade than anyone else in Europe, giving them a competitive edge. Today, Stari Grad, the old city, is where you can see the history of Ragusa on display. From the main entrance on the west side, the historic walls are the first thing that get your attention. The closely packed red tile roofs are also grabbing the eye. Looking closer, you can see narrow alleys, balconies, and courtyards that are reminders it's still a city where people live, even though the entire economy depends on tourism. Inside the western gate, you're presented with the Stratton, the widest street in the old city, a former marsh that now has high-end restaurants and shopping. As with the rest of Croatia, fresh, cold drinking water is readily available in Old Town, much needed in the summer heat. Many restaurants, bars, and cafes line the already narrow streets. 21st century security systems survey centuries-old coffee traditions. If you're willing to climb a few steps and search the outer perimeter, literal holes in the walls can lead you to a pretty special place. Buja, the name of these bars, supposedly means hole in the old Ragusan dialect. There are also places to stay in the old city if you want to be close to the nighttime lights and crowds. Many of the 13th to 16th century old town buildings are repurposed for concerts and other uses. One evening, this 15th century church was a concert venue. Monasteries dating back to the 13th century are now museums. The Franciscan one, close to the western gate, has a beautifully peaceful cloister and the frescoes on the ambulatories are gorgeous. Inside the library and museum section are many liturgical artifacts, including robes, priest robes. There is also a pharmacy dating back from 1317, the oldest still functioning pharmacy in Europe and the third oldest in the world. The wall near the exit door has a reminder of the 1991 war. On the opposite side of Old Town, by the harbor, the Dominican Monastery is next to the Museum of Naive Art. We didn't go in, but we do recommend it if you haven't been to the one in Zagreb. 
The monastery has another beautiful cloister and ambulatories. The chapel was under renovation at the time. The museum collections are amazing. The art and artifacts are remarkable. But for me, it's the illuminated manuscripts that were the most captivating. A 16th century grain warehouse is now the Ethnographic Museum. They even preserved the holes where the grain was stored. Similar to the Ethnographic Museum in Split, artifacts from everyday life are on display. This collection of decorative eggs, originally a pagan then orthodox tradition, was particularly interesting. Perhaps most significant to the history of Dubrovnik, as a maritime trading power, a large section of the museum was devoted to shipbuilding. In fact, there's an entirely separate maritime museum. Tucked into a far corner of the walls in the 14th century St. John's Fort that guarded the critical entrance to the harbor, the maritime museum covers Ragusa seafaring history from ancient times through Dubrovnik's peak in the 16th century. One piece of naval technology, the Karak, helped to propel Ragusa to its zenith more than any other. Karaka, in the local language, it was one of the most influential ship designs in history enabling larger shipments of food and cargo to be shipped farther than ever before. Ironically, however, while Ragosa rode the Caraca to great wealth leveraging its monopoly on the Indian spice trade, Portugal and Spain used the same kind of vessel to ultimately undermine that monopoly. In 1492, the Santa Maria of Christopher Columbus was a Carac. Then, in 1497, the Portuguese navigator Vasco da Gama in his Carrack, the Sao Gabriel, had successfully navigated the Cape of Good Hope and found a sea route to India, bypassing the Ottoman Empire entirely. From then on, the wealth of the Republic of Ragusa was in decline. Of course, the most iconic parts of Dubrovnik Stare Grad are the walls running about 1950 meters or 6400 feet in length with a maximum height of 25 meters about 80 feet they were designated a unesco world heritage site in 1979 and are a museum in themselves with a separate entrance fee to match like any ancient construct the walls evolved over centuries but the final design was set in the 14th century after the city regained its autonomy from venetian suzerainty Construction lasted from the beginning of the 15th century until the latter half of the 16th. The walls are the most visible manifestation of the Ragusa motto, Liberty is not sold for all the gold in the world. There are several places where you can ascend to start walking along the walls. We went to the entrance by the west gate. After climbing the stairs to the top of the walls, you quickly realize there are more stairs. and more. And even more. At least, eventually, you get to go down some stairs. But before you're done, 
of course, even more stairs. Despite all the stairs, completing the mile plus circuit can be done in less than an hour. And there are at least two intermediate points to descend out if it's too strenuous. But be prepared and wear good walking shoes. There are also some options to stop for food and drink along the way. You definitely get a different perspective of the city from the top of the walls. You really appreciate how tightly packed the town buildings are and how compressed the things of daily life really are. The town also feels a lot more like a fortress, protecting the port, and even the Dominican monastery that's completely surrounded by the walls. It's also interesting to gaze down on the patrons, swimmers, and kayakers around the Bouja hole-in-the-wall bars. Without a doubt, the Dubrovnik walls leave a lasting impression. We hope that you enjoyed our video. If you did and want to see more from us, Please help us out with the YouTube algorithm and hit like on the video, subscribe on our channel, and feel free to share. Fala.